doing today. It's so good to see you again and thank you so so much for stopping back by to see what I'm up to. And what I'm up to today is what I hope to be a pretty quick video. I'm fixing to put together my lantern centerpiece for my kitchen table. Everything that I'm going to be using for this lantern centerpiece are accent pieces that I used last year along with a funky bow swag topper so I am doing this because I really want to show you guys that I do reuse my same decor pieces year in and year out and year in and year out now last year I did make up this funky bow swag because I had just taught myself or learned how to do it so I'm not going to recreate the wheel this year. I'm going to use the same table runner that I used last year. I'm going to use, I, I'm not having the table, I did have a navy blue tablecloth on the table. We've taken the tablecloth off, but I am still going to use the same runner. I had a runner up on top of the navy blue tablecloth. So I'm using the same runner, I'm using the same candlesticks, I'm using the same candles, and I'm going to use the same accent pieces for this lantern. So let me turn around and we're gonna get started and I'll tell you a little bit more about this lantern centerpiece. So here we go, let's get turned around. Okie dokie, I'm back. Now let me explain my lantern centerpieces to you guys before I get started. For those of you who are new to my channel, this is one of my, dare I say, my signature pieces. I believe I was the first one to come up with something like this on YouTube, or at least I had not seen anybody else. I've been doing my centerpieces like this for years. Uh, and I love using a tray underneath my lantern so that I can make an arrangement around my lantern, but have it contained in a tray. Also, I like to be able to pick up my tray and move it for when we have company and if we might need to clean off the table. Kristen comes over here with her schoolwork a lot. She's a kindergarten teacher and likes to spread out. She'll either spread out here on the island and there or there have been times when she's spread out over on the kitchen table. So I like to be able to, I like it to be mobile. So with that in mind, I purchased this tray years ago, right after we moved into this house actually, and we've been in here almost six years. I know this tray is at least every bit of four years old, four or five years old, and I got it at Hobby Lobby, and I have not seen this tray available in a while. It came with this tray and then a smaller tray. It came in two different sizes. This tray is 20 and a half inches long and 13 and a half inches wide, and that lantern is 20 inches, 22 inches with this, with the handle up like that, 22 inches tall by 10 by 10 by 10 by 10. So that kind of gives you a, a little idea of the, the size comparisons here. This is a big lantern. It is a big, fat lantern that makes a big statement. So let's get started with making this centerpiece. Now, I have it sitting up on my Lazy Susan that Chris made me. Let me move it over to you just a little bit. And uh, the reason being is I'm going to decorate this from all sides, so I'm gonna be turning it. He also has, Chris also has a piece of wood that we set down on our table. You can see this tray has feet on it, so he cut me a piece of wood that fits perfectly right between the, the feet on the table too, so that the feet don't dig into the table. So there you go. All right, first thing I do is I get myself a, now I'm gonna be anal retentive. Now this really does not make any difference, but the writing was upside down there and it's driving me crazy. <laughs> not that it makes a lick of difference, but it does to me. Okay, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a tape, a, a placemat in here. And this placemat matches the runner that I have on the table over there. And the reason I put this in here is just simply to help hold the lantern still so it doesn't slide over the mirror. Also to protect the mirror from some of the accent pieces. I don't want it to get scratched. I may use it in another capacity at some other time. So I always 
put a placemat down into my trays or those that I'm worried about that sort. This is a big heavy metal lantern, so I'm worried about it scratching. So anyway, I'm gonna grab the lantern first, and we're gonna do just a tiny bit of decorating, which is really nothing inside of it, because I'm gonna have enough on the outside of it where I'm gonna not really gonna need anything on the inside. For my big lanterns, I always use a Luminera candle. This candle is nine by four, and it is Luminera, and it takes two D batteries, and you can turn it on and off with a remote. And you can see, or maybe you can't see, but the candle, the uh, flame flickers, there you go, inside of it. So I'm simply, I just wanna put the one candle, and then I have a Pipberry garland that I got from thepipberrybarn.com. This is going to go around the lantern. And I cut off a piece of it and made myself a candle ring. This is gonna go around the lantern. This is gonna go around the candle inside the lantern. And I just tied it together with a, with a tie wrap there, you can see. And I'm just gonna put it over this candle. And then I'm simply gonna put the candle inside the lantern. I don't have to set the candle up on anything because it's big enough that it'll stand up nice and tall for me. I do take a minute to kind of fluff up the pit berries. And then I shut the door. And that is all I'm going to do with the inside just to highlight it just a little bit. Okay, now, I'm gonna set the lantern inside the tray and pull this back down. I wanna make sure I have it centered on the tray. So, this is important, because if you don't get your lantern centered on your tray, your whole centerpiece is gonna be off kilter. So it's kind of important to measure, it's about six inches. And that's about two and a half. Two and a half. And six. I got it right about right. What do you know? How'd I do that? <laughs> All right. So the first thing I do is I take the rest of that Pipberry garland and I'm simply just going to wrap it right around. And that's it, really, and just pull it together in the back and fluff it. Take some time to fluff it a little bit. I had to dig this out of my garage. I did not put this away with my uh, accent pieces because I use this for other times of the year, like at Christmas time and stuff. I believe I use this at Christmas time. So I do wanna take some time to fluff though. And this will, in actuality, kind of disappear, but it just gives us a nice base, and it will peek up and through. Okay. That's about got that. There we go. That looks pretty. You wouldn't have to do anything else to that, you guys, and that could look patriotic, just like that. You know, you wouldn't have to do anything else to it. Of course, I will, <laughs> but you wouldn't have to. Okay, first thing, um, and I don't remember how I did this, and I promise you guys I did not look back to see what I did. So I'm going to do this the way I think I probably did it last year. Here I have some of navy blue balls with cream stars, and then I have cream stars with navy blue stars, cream balls with navy blue stars. So I'm gonna guess that I had anchored the corners with these and put them in opposing corners. And I like to anchor my corners 
and I don't know why, don't ask me why, I really don't know, you guys. I just know that it makes my eyes happy when I have my corners anchored. And then I have four of these. These were meant to hold pictures, actually. Aren't they cute? Just little stars. I don't remember. Well, here. I got them from Hobby Lobby last year for $3.99. I'm sure I paid 30% off or 40% off, whatever they were offering. And I'm going to say I probably have these. One in the front, one in the back, and one on either side. Right in the center. Okay, so that empties that bag and part of that bag. I don't know about that stuff. Then I have some florals here. So let's fill in. I'm just going to dump these out and see what I have here. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight white. Two, three, four, five, six blue. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven red. Am I missing a red? Hmm. Let's see, I'm gonna guess, I have no idea how I did this last year, y'all. I promise y'all, I don't know. We're gonna just go for it. See what I come up with. <laughs> I have one red rose. I have no idea where it goes. So we're just gonna go with it like that. That looks good. Let's kind of have the corners with blue and white and then a red in the middle and then the reds on either side. I think it looks pretty, just like that. Okay, next, 
So that empties those two. All I have left are these red tufts, which I'm sure I have around here. But let me get the bow topper on first. So let me move closer to you. Like I said, I made this last year and I will give you a link in the description. You can see I'm using pretty much the same pit berries. Only I have some that have a little bit of red in there. Hello. <laughs> Can you see? Did I cover up the whole camera? There we go. Woo! All right, I'm gonna just tie this on. Let me come and get you. I'll bring you back over here so you can see what I do here. Actually, I'm gonna light this down like this. I don't wanna see that in the back. Now, how I do my, how I tie these on, and I have made a double funky bow topper for Christmas. I made that last year. I don't usually do that though, to be honest. For one thing, it's not very cost effective. It's pretty expensive to do that. And for another thing, it's just, it's a lot on a lantern. So what I do is just go left over right and I pull that as tight as I can. Really, really, really tight. And then make a loop. Loop this around, twist it, just so the right side comes out the other side, and pull it tight. I almost did it just like I did last year, huh? <laughs> Not quite, though. Not too bad. And that is a square bow. Okay, let me turn this back around and put my camera away you guys up a little bit. Obviously, I need to do a little fluffing. So let me do that. Then I'm gonna show you one more thing I'm gonna do, two more things. I'm gonna add some of these to the bottom, and then I'm gonna add a set, I'm gonna add a set of these around into, the, one will be right in the bow, and then we'll trail it down and put it in with the bottom portion of the lantern. Centerpiece. Let me do a little fluff and I'll be right back. All right, let me get these. I think I got these, I know I did. I got these from Joann's last year. Here's the battery pack, I don't even know. Oh, batteries are still working, that's a miracle. So I'm just gonna leave it alone. I'm gonna hide this battery pack down beside, usually right here in the front, and it kind of disappears. And now I'm just going to trail these around one time, I believe, and then I'm going to right on up and into the bow, I hope. in a minute here. I want to make sure that I have enough to go right up in that bow and down. So it looks like it's going to need to be really close to the lantern. Let me figure out how I did this last year. <laughs> Pretty sure I just looks like we had a piece of wire in them. Maybe I had them wired on. Looks like it. Just have a piece of wire stuck through the stars. Just twisting it right around one of my loops. And that should hold it into place. And then I'm just going to take it down, tighten these around here. Looks 
all right. I'm going to let that one kind of hang there. And I think I'll just tie this on with a tie wrap. So if I have a white one, hang on. Actually, I don't even think I need to tie it on there, y'all. I think it's going to stay there. And I'll just twist some of the... I'm not going to tie that on. It's going to stay right there, just like that. the wire behind that star. I'm just going to kind of hide the wire. And let the stars kind of fall where they will. out of there. And yeah, you might be able to see a little bit of that one. Let me see if I can get some tip berries down or over that. That's fine. It's not going to bother me. I'd rather see the lights than worry about the, the cords. I like it. I think it looks good. Alrighty. That is it, my friends. Let me do a little fluff in here. Oh, wait, no, it's not it. I have these. Hang on. To pull the red down into the lower portion. Let's see here. I'll start sticking some of these in here and there. it looks good all right let me get this on the table and well first I'll do some final words and then I'll put it on the table and take a last video for y'all oh, here we go it looks pretty and I usually face the bow into the room because people come around the table this way and walk on in. So that's why I go ahead and put it out toward the room like that. Well, that bow held it together beautifully and it was in a bin, you guys. It was, wasn't even in a bag. I just had it laying on top of a bin, you know? And that's how I do my seasonal decor. I get asked that a lot. Where do I store my seasonal decor? Well, I store it in our basement. We thankfully have a basement and I store it in bins and all the bins are labeled. And there are times when I use really big Ziploc bags to put like, for instance, my three tier tray. I put all of my three tier tray in a big three gallon Ziploc bag. I'll put all of these accent pieces, as you saw, you know, in Ziploc bags. I don't know why I didn't use all of this, but I didn't. Kitchen table lantern centerpiece. Looks like I had those stars and that pick inside. Well, I'm not worrying about that this year, but that's where I had that. I didn't read the label. I should have read the label. <laughs> Kitchen table lantern centerpiece. I did not know that three gallon bags existed last year. That's why I have like three. This year I'll use a big bag and put everything in one, one big bag. So. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this little tutorial. It really wasn't me making anything other than just creating the bottom, you know, of the centerpiece again and adding the stars and, you know, tying this bow topper on, which again, check the description and I'll get you a link for where I made that. So last year, probably look a little different in that one. Maybe, I don't know. I've lost some weight since then, I guess. <laughs> anyway, that's it for this one. So let me go into some final words here. Pull a little closer to you so I can look you in the eye. 
and uh, then I'll get this into, actually I'll ask Chris to help me get it into place, and then I'll take a final video around the table. So. Thank you all so much for joining me, and for those of you who are struggling or suffering with a catastrophic illness or chronic pain, I hope you have someone there with you, taking care of you, helping you get through each day, making the very, very best out of each day. I hope there's nothing weighing on your minds or your hearts, pulling your attention away from where you want it to be or from where it should be. To bits to, I love y'all to bits to bits to bits, hugs all around, and I keep you in my thoughts and my prayers every single day. And remember, in crafting, there are no mistakes only unique creations. So with all that said, I'll just say, until next time, y'all take good, good care. Bye-bye.